So to become a public figure, I put down five things. One, think like one. See, sometimes before you do something, you say to yourself, would a public figure do this? Since I'm one, would I do that? No, I wouldn't do that. Oh, good. I won't do that. Would I do this? Absolutely. Would a public figure say, this is how it is, and have that kind of intensity? Uh, what kind of public figures I want to model? Absolutely. Depends on your outcome, right? Think like one. And thinking like one means what I'm having to learn right now in my life is being able to take people's distortions, deletions, and generalizations and not get too caught up in it. I still get caught up sometimes. But like I, I, in New York, I got a call yesterday from New York. And they said, you know what's going on about your NLP certification? Which I, I, how many people here were in certification? Was that one of those powerful experiences of your life? I, to me, it was the most powerful experience I'd ever had. I mean, the stuff we did there was phenomenal. You know, from guys off the street to the golfer to the gentleman, you know, to Mitch, uh, W. Mitchell. Unbelievable stuff. And you know what's on the street about it? People who don't like what I'm doing, they say, well, in New York here, they're talking about an NLP community saying, well, these people came out of your seminar and they're catatonic. This one lady's catatonic. She's totally catatonic. She's not being able to move or do anything since she left your seminar. And her, her, her sister's really upset. And she called us. Why did they call her? Why didn't they call me? I said, why didn't she call me if she's upset? If, she, if she's really catatonic, why haven't we gotten a call? Bottom line is that's the kind of stuff that's out there. And the first thing I do is I go, and I go, think like a public figure. Public figure should expect it. See, one guy helped me one time. Somebody attacked me viciously. In fact, it was after Denver. I was so angry after Denver. You know, and I'm going to take the appropriate actions to stop people from doing that, right, from a legal standpoint. I've let it go, let it go, let it go. And sometimes you've got to just let people know that's not acceptable behavior and use the appropriate systems. But I was real upset about it, instead of just letting that be handled by the appropriate people. And I was all upset about this. One guy came to me, says, Tony, he says, nobody ever shot at Reagan until he was president. I thought, oh, that's a nice reframe. See, a public figure would expect that. So consider yourself a public figure, because you want to be, you want to affect the public, so be a public figure, be it now. Create it now, be it now, that way you'll manifest it. So think like a public figure, and your decisions will be different, your actions will be different, and I think it will enrich your life, because it'll just add another filter. Second key. Second key here, it says, is to move like a public figure. <laughs> Which means what? Have a physiology of a public figure. See, nothing's more depressing to me. I see a public figure, somebody I respect, right? And they walk around going, uh-huh. Uh, have you seen them? Have you ever met somebody and you meet them in person, they're not anywhere near like what you'd hoped they were like, or what you thought they were like? They kind of, see, move like a public figure. See, a public figure, in my idea of a public figure, the kind that I want to model, are people that are charismatic and are powerful. That means they're that way all the time. At least, at least while they're in public, right? I mean, if they're scum, you know, if they're really weak and all that stuff in the back, you know, and they, then let them do that at home. But God, if they're, if they're trying to affect people a certain way, then they need to be consistent and congruent. So as a public figure, you should move a certain way. You shouldn't, you know, be lethargic. You shouldn't be walking around. You're a public figure now. You're representing something that you believe in. People are going to judge whether or not it's affected by looking at you. See, so now you're a public figure, aren't you? So if you move around going, yeah, this is a really great program, you ought to come. It's probably not going to get the same result than if you were congruent. And by the way, that's the value. I represented Jim Rohn for years because he taught attitude. And the most valuable part of that is, in order to teach attitude, and be, in other words, to sell attitude and persuade people about attitude, you've got to have a good one. See, so if you go, come to a seminar, it doesn't go very well. Because people are looking at you, right, going, hmm, right? And usually they're looking for a crack in your armor, right, that, that they're looking for. So what you want to do is make sure they're as few as possible. Right? You go, I'm a human being, but here's it is, boom. And you're operating with congruency. You move. You have a physiology of a public figure. And I want you to think about what that means for you. Because I have my idea what it means for me. You've got to figure out what that means for you. Third one. You've got to communicate or talk like a public figure. Communicate. Talk like a public figure. Speak like a public figure. See, a public figure usually is thinking a little bit about what they're going to say. And they're trying to do it, in my opinion, the kind I want to model. Once again, there's lots of public figures, right? Uh, what's the gentleman who owns Hustler? I guess he's a public figure. Right? But he's not the one I'm talking about. I'm talking about a different model, OK, than the gentleman who owns Hustler. Larry Flynn, right? Um, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about people who you personally are considered to be in the public to be effective in creating positive change in our culture. Those are the people. And they speak a certain way. They communicate a certain way. They have a certain frame around the way that they talk and why they talk and when they talk. And I think that's something that's worthy of your thought. Think about how would I speak if I was a public figure. Number four, expect like a public figure. Expect like a public figure. See, a public, victor, uh, uh, a public figure expects certain things to happen. Depending upon their own personal character and what they demonstrate, they expect it. See, I'm beginning to expect things to work exactly the way they work perfectly. I've done that for some time, but it's increased. I've begun to expect things to happen that I never expected before. 
See, because as a public figure, you can expect things. You can expect to be attacked, and you also expect incredible rewards when you go public. See, it's like taking your company public. You're all going public now. You're personally going public. So what you want to do is start having expectations of the rewards. The most, most public figures, are they the ones that you like? Are they effective? Are they persuasive? Are they making a difference in the culture? Do they have the freedom that they want in many areas? And decide how, what kinds of things you want to expect as a public figure. And if you have that expectation, you're not going to be disappointed. You're going to be able to attract what you want. And last one, number five, obviously, is be a public figure. Which means, if you don't believe you are now, act as what? Act as if. Act as if you're a public figure, one that is a model of human excellence, which is the whole thing that I've been trying to tie in tonight for you, and hopefully effectively for you now. And uh, don't believe in angry. But other than that, what I want you to know, <laughs> what I want you to realize is the killing fields is a result because there weren't enough public figures of the caliber and type that would create a culture that didn't kill each other. So you get to be a new model, a new example for the world. If you're willing. If you're willing to go for it. And you're willing to share it. And that's what you get to do in the next week. Okay? So I challenge you to do all that you possibly can in the next seven days to share an experience that you found powerful with as many people as possible. The minimum things that you committed to. Have the courage to follow through. Make sure you communicate with everyone that you persuade in a way that causes people to take action. And that tonight when you dream, you integrate all that I've said here because I've given you plenty. All right? Good night.